customers, our employees, and our partners to soar with us. That is the theme for our integration, and that's the logo you see here. That's not the new logo of the company. That's just the theme for the integration. I don't want any confusion anywhere, so I thought let me just clarify it. We intend to use this theme as we go through the merger process, and it obviously is trying to show to everyone that both the companies are coming together and we want to soar on a united basis. Uh, very quickly, let me just run through the transaction details. Uh, just a disclaimer clause. Uh, uh, please understand as I use some of the terms MSI stands for Mitsui. Others you know, but MSI stands for Mitsui Sumitomo. Uh, and the rest of them I think uh, you are quite well aware of. This is a merger of live insurance business of two very strong business houses. There are four companies involved in the merger process. SGFC Life, Max Life, Max Financial Services, and Max India. It's a single composite scheme of arrangement. As a first step, Max Life will merge into Max Financial Services, which is a listed entity. Max Financial Services today has an insurance business and a non-insurance business. So Max Life will merge into Max Financial Services. As a second step, the merge entity will demerge the life insurance undertaking into SGFC Life. And this entity is referred to as the merge co subsequently. So Max Life, again I want to repeat, Max Life will merge into Max Financial Services. Max Financial Services will take the Max Financial uh, Max Life business and the insurance business of Max Financial Services and demerge it and it will be merged into SGFC Life. As a step three, whatever is left in Max Financial Services, which is holding the non-life insurance business, that will be merged with Max India. And that is also a listed entity. At the end of this transaction, just as I give you the shareholding of each of the companies as they stand today, SGFC Life, uh, Standard Life has a shareholding of 35%, which was increased recently. SGFC Limited owns 61% uh, plus, balance is owned by others, including PNG Invest. As far as Max Life Insurance is concerned, Max Financial Services uh, owns 69.9%. Uh, Access Bank owns 5.9%, uh, almost close to 6%, my apologies. Uh, and MSI owns 25%. As far as Max Financial Services is concerned, Max Sponsor Group uh, owns 30.9%. Uh, there are foreign institutional investors, domestic institutions, and others. At the end of this transaction, the SGFC life will be owned, and the shareholding is shown here, as we expect it to uh, happen, based on the current shareholding. SGFC Limited and Standard Life will be the promoters of SGFC life. They will own 66 0.6% of SGFC Life at the end of the merger. MSI will own 7.8. Max Sponsor Group will own 6.5%. As you can see there, the foreign shareholding of the merged entity will be below 49% and will stand at 41.5%. So the promotion shareholding is 666 .6 and the foreign shareholding is 41.5. What are the deal terms? Based on the agreed commercials, the relative valuations of the two entities of SGFC Life will be 69% of Max Life, 31%. There will be a non-compete and non-solicitation payment which will be made to Mr. Analjeet Singh. Uh, the term will be four years from the payout of the first tranche. The first upfront tranche will be 501 crores, followed by equal tranches of about 116 crores each on the first, second, and third anniversary of the merger date. The payment will be made by the merge co from the shareholder's account. So when the merge uh, company emerges, the payment will be made from the shareholder account to the merge company. The payment is subject to uh, receipt of an upfront majority approval of the majority of the minority shareholders of both Max Financial Services and Max Life. Uh, Max Life will seek consent from its shareholders holding more than 75% stake for the proposed transaction. Uh, I believe that consent will be coming through very shortly. As far as the brand is concerned, we have also entered into a brand agreement, or the Merge Co will enter into a brand agreement, whereby we'll be allowed to use the Max brand as part of our life insurance products uh, for a period of seven years. So that means that we can sell all the products of Max Life for the next seven years on the merge, uh, on the merger, on the date of the merger, or whatever products are there in Max Life can be sold by the Merge Co. Whatever products are there with IDA pending approval can be sold for the seven years. And we also have the right to make some changes to the products if demanded by IDA or the market for the next seven years. Access Bank Corporate Agency Agreement will continue till September 2021 as it stands today with Max Life. The board, board of HGFC Life will continue. 
there is an integration planning committee which has been formed to uh, work towards the integration roadmap and resolve integrated, integration related issues. It will be a joint MAX group and SGFC Life committee with majority representation from SGFC Life. To ensure that policyholders are safeguarded, existing policies will continue on an as-is basis with same terms until their tenure. Nothing will be changed. Uh, actually, we have met IDA, and IDA wants to ensure that not only we do that, even the bonus philosophy and the fund management philosophy is maintained, and we intend to assure IDA and create suitable arrangements as that continues. The final structure on the effective date is that, again, for everyone's benefit, Max Life's insurance business will demerge into HGFC Life. Non-insurance business of Max Financial Services will go into Max India. HGFC Life will issue to shareholders of Max Life and Max, Max FS new shares, approximately 90 crore new shares. HGFC Life, as a part of this process, would become a listed company with HGFC Limited and Standard Life Mauritius Holdings as promoters. What is the rationale for the transaction? It will lead to obviously creating a company with increased market share and diversified distribution network. Market share of the combined entity based on Proforma Financial is 16 would be 10.8 and 3.85% for individual and group segment respectively. We believe that it will lead to a massive increase in the number of service touch points for the customers. The estimated number is more than 15,000. If you include our branches and the service touch points of all our partners combined. The distribution mix will obviously improve. Agency which is, will be 19%, Banker 64, and Direct 11. To just to give an idea from an HDFC Life perspective, this number for agency was 13.5%, and Banker was 68%, Direct was a similar number. If you look at it from a Max Life perspective, agency was much larger. It was uh, close to 28%, Banker was over 50 uh, plus percent. It will lead to the widest product basket with a balanced portfolio. Today, HGFC Life has 48 products, Max Life has 28 products. We believe that when we bring the combination together, we will have the widest suite of products across uh, all kinds of product categories. The product mix will also become more balanced. Power will be 41, non-power will be 15, ULIP will be 45. I think the non-power ratio for both the companies is similar, which is 15, but the power ratio for Max is higher, for us is lower, and our ULIP portion is higher, and for them is lower. We will have enhanced access to the bank assurance channels, Three of the five largest private banks will be working with the merged company uh, when the merger happens. These are some of the names of the banks who, with whom we will have corporate agency agreements. Uh, we also have signed up uh, partnerships with almost all the small finance banks and some of the new banks which have been given licenses. It will be a very, very strong and powerful franchise as far as bank insurance is concerned. It will also lead to revenue and cost synergies to enhance shareholder value. Uh, we believe that we will be creating an integrated platform across technology, digital, mobility, analytics, underwriting, and operations. It is our intention that on the date of the merger, effective date of the merger, the customers of both SDFC Life and Max Life should get a seamless experience across all our touch points. And they can be serviced across any touch point as far as the requirements are concerned. It will obviously lead to higher cost sale opportunities. Uh, we believe that both the companies over a period of time have developed immense strengths in their distribution channels. For example, Max Life is very well known for what they do in their agency channel. Similarly, they have created some uh, great practices in their bank insurance channel with Excess Bank. We have similar experience with, for example, HDFC Bank and what we have done in the digital channel. We'll be taking some of these best practices to uh, all the channels of the merged entity. They will also be savings due to value engineering. There will be improved employee value proposition. Uh, one of the primary reasons for the merger is to, as I said, to make something which is more than the sum of the parts. So there will be better opportunities for employees across the two organizations and the geographies. Uh, it will lead to a, access to a larger talent pool. Uh, we believe that at the end of this merger, the merged entity will perhaps has the, have the best talent pool across the insurance sector. And, and that is saying a lot. Uh, we wish, should, and we intend to become employer of choice to attract and retain talent. These are some of the numbers uh, for on a financial 16 and quarter one financial 17 basis. Total premiums of 25,529 crores, uh, AUM 110,000 crores, 
solvency margin will, of the merged entity will be uh, much higher than what say GFC Life has today, 252 percent. EV will be 15,850 crores, which will be the highest in the private sector. And overall post overrun margins will be 19.2. If you look across some of these matrices, you will realize that product mix is complementary. Our new business margins are very similar. If you look at the persistency of the two entities, this is also very, very similar. So it was almost God created these two entities to come together, and we are coming together today. The numbers for the quarter first uh, financial 17 are also very similar. Uh, the performance trend of both the companies continue at the same pace as before. Uh, these are some of the other matrices. Number of employees will go to 23,620. Uh, number of branches will go to 601. Uh, customers will be about 7 million customers on the individual side. Agents will be 134,000 and we'll have eight key bank insurance partners. We expect, uh, as we move forward, uh, we are announcing the transaction today. We have executed some of the documents today. We expect to complete the execution of all the documents within seven days of announcement. Uh, we, uh, we are going to apply to CCI by September 7, 2016, which is a requirement, and we expect an approval. We have said here four to five months. We expect it to come in uh, a little bit earlier. IDA notice of intent and application for in-principle approval is expected to be filed within the next 30 to 45 days. Again, the in-principle approval is expected in three to four months. Uh, SEBI, we have to, we will be applying within two to three weeks. Uh, both Max India and Max FS will be applying to SEBI. In-principle approval is expected in the next 30 days. And obviously, after receiving all these approvals, we intend to approach the High Court uh, uh, and uh, then apply for their permission to actually you know, follow through on the scheme, composite scheme of arrangement. I just want to make uh, one or two important points here. Our, I, I, and I want to reiterate it. Our ambition is to create something which is bigger than the sum of the parts. We believe very strongly that the insurance sector is entering a phase of growth which has perhaps not been seen in the past, and we believe that the runway for growth is quite long. The merged entity will have the wherewithal to make huge amount of investments as we move forward in technology, in digitization, and it is our intention to emerge as a cutting-edge digital insurer in the future, apart from doing all the other things. We also believe the merger will provide greater opportunities to our customers, because we'll be giving them a wider choice of products, and we'll give them a much more service touch points than before. It will provide a better opportunity for all the employees, because of the size and the scale which this merged entity will have, and the growth ambitions we have. We'll also strengthen our value proposition for our distributors, and so they will also gain uh, through this merger as we move forward. And finally, since a lot of shareholders are sitting on the dais, we'll, we believe we'll also be providing a higher value to our shareholders, which the standalone entities would not have been able to achieve. So a very quick snapshot of what this merger entails. Let me now request uh, Mr. Deepak Parikh to just uh, give a uh, few remarks, and after that, we'll request Mr. Ranjit Singh to do the same, and then we'll open up for questions. Mr. Parikh. There is very little to say after Amitabh's presentation, and he's given you all the numbers, but all I'd like to say today is that the Board of Directors of uh, HDFC Standard Life, Max Financial Services, and Max Life, and Max India Limited at their respective board meetings held today approved signing of the definitive agreements. So we have signed number of documents and I also wanted to thank the management teams, uh, Rahul, Mohit, Rajesh, Amitabh, Viba, and their respective teams who have been working tirelessly in the last six weeks to see this day happen today with the total support and uh, sleepless nights from lawyers, and we had large, many, many lawyers and bankers, Upwood, Chini, and then many bankers. So without their help and support, I don't think we would be here today. Even today, it was touch and go. Till yesterday, we didn't know whether we would be having all the documents ready. But the lawyers finally came through. Um, I also wanted to say that Mr. Analjeet Singh will continue to be a supportive shareholder of the merged entity along with the other shareholders of Max Life. And we all will work towards the objective of making the merged company a better company, a bigger company, a more successful company. Analjeet and his team has created <coughs> a strong and robust franchise 
following the strategy of consistent and responsible growth to create value for both policyholders and shareholders across the years. Analji doesn't uh, miss a moment to remind me that for 16 years he racked at this company, day in and day out with his colleagues, and he's built huge amount of value in this company. And I agree with him, he has built value, and it's an excellent company that he has built. We really appreciate his efforts and the domain expertise. As, a, as a, Amitabh has said, we will proceed with the regulatory filings, and I expect the merger to close within 12 months. The merger will make our consolidated market share of 10.8%. And as, uh, as Amitabh has said, that uh, uh, the AUM will be 1,10,000 crores, and EV will be about 15,850 crores. We have three, we have eight bank assurance partners, including three large private sector banks. The last few months have been exciting for the Indian economy. Indian financial services and insurance in particular continues to decouple from the rest of the world. And we are seeing attractive growth rates in India. The monsoon fears have abated. Foreign inflows have started and continue to be robust. A transformational GST bill has been passed and the Reserve Bank has recently announced uh, licenses on track for further expanding the financial inclusion program of the government. So the outlook of the financial sector, financial services industry, I think is very good and rosy. We view this merger as a long-term value creation for shareholders of HDFC Life. Insurance is a highly, highly competitive industry. And even after a decade and a half, now we, we started in the year 2000, so 15 years later, LIC continues to be a single dominant player. LIC's market share today is over 50%. So the consolidation in the private sector will enable creation of large insurance companies, which is inevitable, which will drive economies of scale, it will improve servicing standards, and you need a strong balance sheet to be in life insurance business. Both the companies have proven ability to navigate through turbulent times. And the 15 years that we both have been in existence, uh, we've done reasonably well. We've, uh, we've had losses for a decade or more. We didn't pay dividends for more than 10 years. And uh, it was a tough business to start and keep on putting more money every year, every second year. So we are seeing the results now. And consolidation in this industry, in effect, is already happening. If you look at the top four private sector companies today, four private sector life insurance companies today constitute 65% of the market share, of the private sector market share. Four companies constitute 65%, and the other 19 companies put together contribute 35%. We are, Max and HDFC are among the most reputed names in this industry. And we are very happy, and today is a joyous occasion for us to see this happen. And uh, all I can say is that we look forward for a great association with the MAX group and Mr. Analjit Singh in particular. Uh, we are excited at this opportunity. We will work hard to see it work. And it's a great moment of joy, and we look forward for support from everyone. Thank you. Bhai said to me, Itna lamba lamba kya lek rahe ho, hai? So, as I have that, uh, you see, I have a little more to say, Deepak Bhai, because uh, in this marriage, we are the bride, ne? Uh, the merging entity. So, allow me that. <laughs> so, firstly, uh, very good evening and greetings to all of you from the Max Group, and I thank many of my directors who stood by me to make themselves available this evening. To Deepak Bhai, friends from HDFC, ladies and gentlemen. Um, when I did do this Lamba Lamba writing, the first 
emotion or the first thought that crossed my mind is what I want to share now. And I want to say that to begin with, I must recognize the contribution of a very special person in this whole the life of our life insurance business, Tony Singh, the founder CEO of our life insurance business starting way back in 1999. And without the foundation and successful startup that Tony led, we would not be sitting here today. So thank you, Tony, and I understand he's going to join us for dinner this evening. So today is uh, not only special from this venture's point of view, but is additionally reminiscent of August 1998, Dibagwai. Because it was also in August then, and for those of you uh, who are somewhat of tea or so, you will remember that a similar event happened in our lives. And of course, I'm referring to Max Dutch, Max Hutchinson, and so on and so forth, right here in Bombay. Uh, and of course, it's fair to say that the media and the media jocks and the journals were much more relaxed then and nowhere as sophisticated as you see in their preparedness and their equipment and so on and so forth. But that's nice, that's a part of growth. So very simply, coming to the point, um, why is this merger happening? I think that is the most pertinent question on this event. And the answers lie in the following few lines. We see structural changes in the life insurance industry. For example, distribution and banker. That is not the way we started out. It was agency-led to begin with. The government's model was to build an employment-oriented, led life insurance business, but that changed after 10 years. So we see the distribution arrangement through banker changing the landscape of this sector. We see shorter horizon products being more palatable with future markets, i.e. ULIPs investments and so on. And we see, therefore, that margins will come under pressure, pressure if expense management, etc., is not brought to the fore. So hopefully, this will not only provide all the things that Amitabh and Deepak Bhai have talked about, but even things like optimizing expenses will improve the expense ratio and therefore the health of the merge entity. Um, we built a fantastic business focused on agency, protection, and savings, and with outstanding governance. And then came bank assurance. And um, I, I can clearly see from my experience with access and the power, the power that HDFC Bank brings to the table that the future of this merge entity will bring much more for all the stakeholders than stand alone for Max Life or HDFC Life. So we therefore took a call. We've always believed in the concept of what is a natural owner of a business. And a natural owner of a business is that owner who brings the capital, brings the passion, brings the infrastructure, and brings all the pillars to future growth of the business. And we recognize that HDFC life and, the, and HDFC at large, obviously including HDFC Bank, to be a much stronger foundation for the next 20, 25 years of this merge entity than just Max Life alone. So this will take us, as you've already heard from Amitabh, that this was perhaps destined to happen, will make us the single largest private life insurer in the country, and, and that also only after LIC. So, um, I won't take more of, because a lot of the things that Amitabh has talked about, there's no point repeating them, but it is obviously opportune that I must first and foremost here, in my thanks, want to uh, talk about my team and specifically acknowledge the management team, Rajesh Sood and his team at Max Life, who have transformed the company into one of India's most admired, profitable, and well-run life insurance companies. They actually doubled the market share over the last five years. Progress, quality, and service excellence, which has been the foundation on which we have built Max Life and the other Max businesses, and emerged as a strong and highly reputed enterprise with a track record of flawless execution in this time. I am mindful that we did not have a consumer service or a consumer product background. I am mindful that Max's profile in its previous life was very different. It was, not a, it was not a financial services company, it was not a bank, and so on and so forth. 
therefore to have come in a way from from those from that background and to have built sitting at number three um, in amongst 23 24 is actually a great great achievement i also want to thank my partners including new york life who did not leave this venture because of of max or of india but actually had a change in strategy and winding up their entire international footprint in 2008, 2009, you would have thought that's the worst year to do that. But the fact is that in a market which had, has and had the highest penetration, they have grown double digits even since then. So I want to thank them. I want to also thank MSI and Mitsui Sumitomo for their support and faith in us. And several key, key investors who've held our hand through this journey, Warburg Pinkers, Goldman Sachs, KKR, and so on. Equally, our advisors, AZB, Ernst & Young, PricewaterCoopers, uh, Amb um, uh, Ambit, and so on and so forth. And finally, to recognize and to thank, there is a character in this room today wearing a yellow tie. Uh, he, his name is Srini. Srini, put your hand up. There you are. And uh, I, I have to say, and, and Deepak Bhai, allow me to say on both our behalves, that in a sense, this is his brainchild. And I'm sure that when he first walked into Deepak Bhai's office and told him, Deepak Bhai probably showed him both doors of his office. Uh, I have only one door and never, never even came to that stage because he walked into Mohit's door. But the fact is that he brought and made good sense to both the partners who are coming to create this merger. And um, here you are, Srini. I think we have done the right thing for the right reasons. And going forward, this will hold us in good stead. So thank you very much, yeah. And finally, Mr. Deepak Parik, who's been a supporter, uh, and they don't know will remember this over the last 15, 20 years of the Max Group, in so many situations as we were building out as a very small company, including telecom days. And I've never had to wait beyond five working days uh, to get a positive call back from HDFC. So Deepak Bhai, I will never forget that. Uh, Amitabh, thank you for shepherding this merger. And I count on you, your team, and obviously Deepak Bhai and Keki and Renu for the seriousness and favor in the fairness in working with my team to make this merge entity a very long lasting and powerful, not only the largest private life insurance, at least dream that it will be the largest life insurance company. On that note, thank you very much. We'll open it up to questions. Oh, if you have any questions, please. Sorry, Nisha Poddar from CLBC TVAC. Um, could you give me the number of uh, the percentage fees that HDFC, the listed company as a parent company, would hold in the listed HDFC life? Because I could catch 66.6% .6 in HDFC and Standard Life as the parent company. Uh, the reason I'm also asking is that HDFC is listed here, and I would also like to know the valuation of the entire merged entity that you have pegged it around uh, for the market cap of the listed entity to be. Because HDFC, it will reflect in the HDFC's share price as well. So many questions. <laughs> yeah. All in the link. Well, the HDFC share in the merged entity will come down to around 42%. 42.5%. There is a there is a conditions of standard life that we must allow them to go up to 25 during the course of the next three to six months. So we may sell some and make them over 25, and that's a condition precedent to the. Now on the valuation, you will decide the valuation, not we. Now since Max Life is listed, Max, <coughs> we will become automatically listed. So we really don't know what the market cap will be, and we cannot even hazard a guess what will be the market value of the combined entity. But MAC shares have run up significantly over the last three months, two months. And uh, let us see what it opens after now. Now the ratio is known in the market. The analysts will work on it, and then we'll see what it will settle down at. Uh, what is the ratio? What is the valuation coming from? Yeah, what is the valuation of uh, MAC? You know, you can like, do your maths. Why don't you just do your maths and come to the no, number? No, if you could give us the number. Uh, the number changes every day because uh, the value of Max Financial Services 
uh, keeps changing on a daily basis. If you do your uh, analysis and uh, do your maths, uh, the number will come somewhere around 65,000 crores. I'll not give you the exact number. We can do. We'll help you with the maths. Mr. Jodhri, uh, just a quick point. Uh, so if we look at the trailing embedded value for both Max and HDFC, uh, and just go by that, the ratio works out to about, I mean, you said attributable value to max is 31%, right? And 69 for HDFC life. Going by the trailing uh, embedded value, it works out about 35 odd percent for, uh, for max. Whereas what you're telling us is 31%. 69 and 31. Yes. Uh, could you just explain, I mean, how uh, that has been worked out as? Uh, you <coughs> maybe, maybe you yeah, should do yeah. that. Because what you are <coughs> observing is on a straight line basis. Right. Uh, you're just sort of taking a multiple, multiplying it, extrapolating. If you give the same multiple to both, you get to about 35%. Yeah, but this is not a merger of multiples. No? This is a merge, merger assets of two and companies liability. and assets and liabilities and so on. Mohit, go ahead. You're the best yeah. person. So, so basically, what's happening here is that the in terms of number of shares, this is three shares for seven shares. That's the ratio, right? Now, your point regarding... Uh, you know, 31 and 69. Uh, this is not a one is to one kind of a swap. You basically, after the diligence was done, which was a vendor diligence, right? We worked out on the basis of the diligence findings, as well as the fact that in the case of HDFC, they have a captive bank. They come in with a captive bank, whereas in the case of Max, we have a relationship with Axis Bank, which is for five years. So that's temporary. Diligence findings also seem to suggest that there is excess capital sitting in, in, in max. So if you ascribe the multiple, you only get a cash value, which is one time. So if you adjust for the cash value, the fact that you know you have a captive bank coming in in this whole relationship, as against max, you don't have one, uh, you'll find that uh, the, the swap ratios are worked out on the basis that it is 31.69, and that is Three shares for every seven. So you're saying that accounts for HDFC bank, the captive bank portion it does, as well. I mean, absolutely. So that's the reason. So that that's the main reason. Does it mean that Max has been valued at 20,500? Uh, look, I, I, I don't think you can get into these numbers. As Mr. Parikh had said, you know, the market uh, is going to play out in terms of what the valuations finally end up in. Okay, so this is still some way to go. All we can tell you at this stage is post diligence, based on the rationale I've given you, the swap ratio works out of 3 to 7. Mr. Parikh, Mr. Singh, after leaving Vijay, you from BC now. Say congratulations to you and all your team. If you could just throw some light, was there any specific concerns which were raised by IRDS, particularly on the future contingency liability, if and when they arise? And has there been any specific uh, no, provisions that have been asked to made, or how has been it looked when the whole deal was uh, worked out? No, we went and met the IRDA chairman. Uh, Mr. Anarjit Singh also went and talked to him. And uh, our teams have been having elaborate discussion with all the members. And uh, we don't get any impression from them that they are concerned about anything. So we don't think that there would be an issue with IRDA. So, there is, a, liabilities. there is no question of any exposure for policyholders for liability. That, that, that question doesn't arise. So between understandings between us, indemnities, assurances to IRDA, etc., <clears throat> that is you should take as given. So obviously, even, even for you, example, the merger expenses, I'm sure that won't devolve on the policyholders in any way, right? I mean, or the contingent liability for that matter. Is was that built into the kind of deal that you struck? Because on the face of it, it, it is a rather complex transaction. I mean, the way you first merged it into Max Financial then demerged the life insurance business. It's not a very simple transaction per se. I mean, was that one of the reasons why the deal turned out to be a little complex? No, it's, I think the inherent nature of the deal is complex. So it didn't turn out to be complex. It was always to be complex because there are three entities, in fact, three and a half, because as Amitabh said, there's Max India also has got a bit of a tail in there. So it, is a, it was always to be a complex structure. Uh, as far as the merger expenses are concerned, Mohit, you, again, I think you are the right person, and Mr. Ajay Bell is from AZB is here. Ajay, if you want to say a word about that, but I so, think it's best left to these folks. So I think now, based on the, the cow path, in terms of when this merger is finally going to crystallize, okay, as Mr. Parikh had said, 
it's about 12 months or so. So you're going to have two, uh, two companies operating the way it is today. So whatever merger expenses are there in terms of lawyer fees or diligence fees is going to be part of the entities in which it's been done. So if, if I think, uh, I hope I've addressed your question. Okay. Uh, So I think you have to understand that we never got into these numbers while decide, deciding the valuation of the two entities. Our basis for valuation of the or the later valuation of the two entities was based on the embedded value of the two entities as of March 16. And we worked off from there and came up with a valuation. The 65,000 crore number which I have quoted, which you forced me to quote, is because Max Financial Services is listed. And based on that listing, there is a certain value which can be ascribed to Max Life Insurance. And based on the swap ratio, you can impute a value to HGFC Life. That's why I quoted a number that maths can be done. And you're also resisting. You want the maths, we'll give you the maths. Uh, the number is higher than 65,000 crores. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Nothing has changed in journalism. I take my comment back. <laughs> <laughs> so, and by the way, since you, know, you asked about IDEA, I just want to add that IDEA, we have had preliminary discussions. IDEA is not going to start driving the merger structure up front. I think we will have to go to them, and then they will really get into details of the structure. We have heard their comments. We have understood some of their concerns. And yes, we have incorporated some of the concerns if they have expressed it. I mean, we were also very practically aware of it. We have ensured that whatever concerns they might have are being incorporated in the way the whole scheme has been designed, which you're calling complex. I mean, as Mr. Singh very rightly said, it was to be, had to be complex because it's the first merger of its kind in the live insurance sector. And that's why we have done it. Mr. That's Mr. how it is. Mr. Singh, uh, Singh uh, Ashwin Mohan here from ET now. Uh, congratulations to gentlemen once again on the uh, merger. Uh, Mr. Singh, you referred to Max as the bride in this transaction. So since uh, increased market share is definitely crucial, and one of the driving factors for this uh, proposed merger. What's the combined market share that the bride and groom combination oh, is? Oh, I point think it's 10 point. Uh, I mean, I've talked about it. No, I, I, I wanted to understand where do you see yourself, where does the combined entity see itself? In terms of Amita market share over the next two to three no, years. No, no, Amita mentioned it. That was 10.4% that you were talking about the current market share. Yes, as a financial year, we have 16 pro forma, yes. Yeah. So we can't be making overlooking statements, statements in the press conference. Yeah. We're not allowed to do it. So. Uh, Rajesh, you have a view? <laughs> no, he based, no. he based, that's the business, so he should have a... I, I think think our, our view would remain exactly the way it's been in the past, but these are solid two companies that are coming together, and I guess each one of us is smart enough to say that when, when two strong, dominant companies get together, create an even more dominant platform, uh, ID, they should obviously outperform, and that's about it. Now, how much outperformance, what's the relative rate, those are again speculative items that we should get to. Question, and that's because, uh, I'll tell you the reason why I asked this question, and that's because uh, the reference to LIC being a behemoth in the industry and the yawning gap between LIC and the private sector players has been referred to even in last time's conference and even in today's conference. So, therefore, just want to get a sense where do you see the combined entity being a formidable uh, competition to a player like LIC, which has been enjoying. Uh, which has been enjoying the leader's post for quite a few years. And that's the only reason for the question. Yeah, it's <laughs> always the chairman's job to, to vision uh, you know, a on bright that, future. On that, let me tell you, once a bear not, not always a bear not. We have seen the scene change in the public sector dramatically. We see, saw it in banks. We saw it in airlines. We saw it in healthcare. We saw it in insurance. We saw it in telecom again and again. And I'm not trying to get, uh, make a tongue-in-cheek comment, and with due respects to LIC, but if your question, at least to us, and I say us and all of us is, that could we ever dream that this new entity called HDFC Life, which is the product of a merged entity, could ever be more than LIC? I think the answer is yes. Now you will say when, I don't know, uh, uh, it's very difficult to say, but I think it's possible. So I don't think just once a behemoth, not always a behemoth. And I think if you see how the market share of the private sector relative to the total insurance business chain and so on and so forth, uh, there, is a, there is a path that, that could lead us there. Mr. Parekh, would you like to add to the yeah. thing? No, in the sense that after insurance being opened up, 
LIC still has 50% of the market share. But all all private sector, not 100. 15 years ago, they had 100. 15 years later, it's 50. 15 years later, it may be 25. It goes on as more private sector companies come up and as more of us have agents and bank assurance partners and all that. We are all keen to push our business and insurance penetration in India is very low and it has to go up. Mr. Singh, you said that the non-insurance business will give you Max India. So, what will this structure be? Mr. Parekh, the question is, how did you calculate the non-compete fee? Non-insurance business, what do you want to do? No, it's not worth the time. There's a small residual piece in Max Financial Services which has nothing to do with life insurance. This merger is about life insurance. So there, that had to find a home somewhere. And before the demerger, that was all in Max India. So we just taken it back in Max India. It's a small piece. It's not worth the time to talk about. Your second question? Second question is, um, as you are aware, Max Life has been in operation for 16 years. They have a solid business, solid franchise. They have what we do not have. So we thought the fit was perfect on the products, on the agency. And uh, so we negotiated a fee for that. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Singh, uh, my, my question is with, there will be a different segment that will be untapped market. Now, we are thinking about 601 branches. After that, as you have told us in the presentation, when the merge entity emerged, there will be 601 branches. You have said that the right thing is that if you have these branches and you have mapped them in India, then the tier 1 and tier 2 are less than tier 3 and tier 4. So, yes, when the merge will be done, because we will have more power, we will have more ability to invest in our ability, we will have more ability to invest in our ability. We will have to tap the whole area where we will not be able to go. But you should not forget that, as I said before, because our banking partners are present in rural areas, there will be a lot of power in the past 5 years. Our current presence in rural areas will be more than 15,000 branches, where we will have to tap the whole area where we will tap the whole area. So it is not that our presence in rural areas is not in rural areas. In rural India, the presence of our banking partners is through. But yes, if this will be merged, it will be necessary that we will open Tier 3, Tier 4 towns and a little bit of Tier 1, Tier 2, where there is overlap. For example, there are about 175 branches in both entities, which are in 5 km radius. So yes, we can reduce some branches there. But that is what we will do. वो ब्रांचेस वहाँ कम करेंगे हम जाके उनको टीयर फोर और टीयर फाइव सीरीज में जाके खोलना चाहेंगे ये फ्रेंचाइज को हम बढ़ाएंगे हम कम करने की हमारे कोई इंटेंशन नहीं है और उसको बहुत तेजी से बढ़ाएंगे नो नो नहीं आधा आधा इश्यू इस वी आर आल्सो वर्किंग वेरी क्लोजली विद द माइक्रो to for them to distribute our products and their their distribution is only in rural India. So we have tied up with three or four of these big microfinance companies that were given licenses recently by the Reserve Bank. So actually we have a relationship with nine out of the ten small finance branches. Uh, me, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Uh, but but just also don't forget that's not the only way rural India develops. Rural India is also coming towards urban India, no? You you people every time you forget that the only way rural improves is by urban going to rural, but rural is also coming to India. So both things are happening. Mr. Singh, a couple of questions on the non-compete fee, 850 crores which you will be getting over a period of say, seven years. How easy will it be to get through SEBI because SEBI has been, has position of no, uh, not allowing non-compete fee? I am an interested party, I should not answer that. Mr. Parikh? Well, um, SEBI will look at the general body resolution. And in the, in the annual general meeting or the EGM, the promoters are not allowed to vote. So the majority of the minority will have to give a vote mm -hmm. and they will have to vote. Ananjit and his, back and his family cannot vote. And if he gets the majority of the minority approved, then SEBI should not have any problem and because the shareholders have approved. And uh, as per the uh, presentation, 
आपने वैसे मेरा पे आउट बढ़ा दिया सात साल चार साल चार प्लस थ्री नो पेमेंट नॉन कंप्लीट पेमेंट चार साल डोंट गिव दिस आइडिया Okay, good, good. Let's talk about that. Firstly, there is no rofa. There is no right to first refusal to waste anybody. And secondly, I don't know the answer to your first question, but I can tell you in a long time. Okay. Uh, just sir, uh, just to add to that, sir, 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 s